Hey everybody, I'm Mike Content. Today I wanted to talk about one of the ways in which you can end a criminal case. Uh, while many cases go to trial, um, still the vast majority of cases either get dismissed or disposed of through what they call a tender of plea, sometimes it's referred to as a plea deal. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have the tender of plea form that we use here in Massachusetts. This particular form is used in both the district courts as well as the juvenile courts. Uh, the Superior Court has a different process, so we're not going to talk about that today. Um, but before you ever get here, what should have happened is your lawyer and you should have looked at all of the evidence that's been provided, uh, thought about how you can fight the case um, before you ever get here. Um, so once you've decided that maybe this is too much evidence or you don't want to take the chance of going to trial, uh, you might want to consider uh, taking a plea. Um, that's when this form comes in. And before you start filling the form out, what your lawyer should have done as well is spoken with the prosecutor to try and come up with some sort of an agreement. Um, the reason for that is oftentimes uh, you can agree to an appropriate sentence. Um, and the judge is much more likely to accept it if both you and the prosecutor, both your lawyer and the prosecutor, are agreeing to a particular sentence. And that way you go in knowing exactly what you're going to get. All right. Um, but, you know, this form is still used. I'm going to take you through it in just a second. Um, taking a look at this particular form, the basic information about who you are, about your cases up here. Um, down the next section, you're saying whether you're entering a guilty plea, admitting sufficient facts or entering a binding plea with a charge concession. And while each of these things has its own significance, essentially they all mean that you're admitting to doing something wrong, at least as to some of the charges in the case, okay? Uh, moving down to the main part of the form, it's these boxes here. Uh, the particular uh, counts are identified by numbers, and that's on the left-hand side here. Uh, the next box for each count, you're gonna tell the court what you're willing to accept for a punishment for a disposition, okay? Um, the prosecutor uh, writes what they want in the next box over to the right, and ultimately the judge makes the decision as to what to do. Um, now, many times the prosecutor will agree with you, but sometimes they don't. And when they don't agree with you, it's what they call a disparate plea, meaning that you don't agree as to the appropriate sentence, and then ultimately it's up to the judge to make the determination. Now, the judge can do exactly what you're asking for, uh, the judge can do what the prosecution is asking for. Or the judge can maybe take a little bit of what you're asking for, a little what the prosecution is asking for, and come up with their own disposition altogether. Um, the most important part of this whole process, though, is you need to understand, is that if the judge doesn't give you exactly what you've asked for, exactly what you've written, for, da written down here in this box, um, if the judge even exceeds it by just a little bit, so let's just say, for instance, you ask for one year's probation on the charge, the judge says, I want to give you one year and one day. You technically do not have to accept that one year, one day. And what you do is you uh, go down here um, and you let the no judge know that you're going to withdraw the plea and that you're going to continue to fight the case, which ultimately usually means heading towards trial. Okay. Um, or what you can do is you can accept what the judge is, is offering, um, if, even if though it differs from what you've asked for in the first place. That's a conversation you should be having with your lawyer after the judge says, hey, listen, this is what I'm willing to do on it. But like I said, you have the right to take this plea back and to continue to fight the case if the judge doesn't do everything you want when they're entering this box here. Now, this is the front form of the plea. Uh, this is what they call, again, the, the tender of plea or admission. Um, the second page of the form, which I'm gonna get to in a second, that has some um, pretty important rights on it and that we're gonna talk about right now, okay? So let me go to that page. All right, so this, this here is the second page of the form. Um, as you can see, this whole section up here, uh, you should read it and read it in detail and talk about, your, talk about it with your lawyer because it talks about the different rights you're giving up in this plea process, okay? And the judge is going to go over these with you. But before the judge even does that, the judge is going to ask you a series of questions to make sure that you do, what you're doing with the plea is knowing, intelligent, and voluntary. Okay. The judge is going to ask you a number of questions, things like how old are you, how far have you gone in school, have you taken any drugs or alcohol or medication in the last 24 hours, and if so, is it affecting your ability to understand what's happening here today? The judge is going to ask you if you've had enough time to speak with your lawyer. Um, and if you think they're, they're giving you good advice, 
um, <clears throat> the judge is going to ask you if anyone's threatening you to enter into this plea. Someone's essentially holding a gun to your head, or someone's offering you something or promising you something. And that doesn't mean that you come up with um, come up with an agreement with the prosecutor. Maybe they were going to reduce a charge or give you a really good deal. A promise in that sense means someone's essentially paying you off to go ahead and take this particular plea. Um, so if they're not doing that, that's you tell the judge, obviously they're not. Um, then the judge will go on to talk about the, the rights you're waiving in order to enter into this plea. And those rights, like I said, are, are, are talked about up here, as well as some other warnings that you have to be aware of. But we're going to talk about those in just a minute uh, here. Uh, but essentially, it's really important you read this entire section and talk about it with your lawyer. Um, but really what it boils down to is five very important rights that you're giving up by entering into this plea. The first is a right to a trial. Now, everybody has the right to a trial. I don't care how much evidence they have against you. They could have everything you're doing on videotape. Um, they could have 500 witnesses who all saw you do it. Um, it doesn't matter. You always have the right to have a trial um, in any case, all right? And you're giving up that right by entering to this plea, all right? Um, the trial could be a trial before a judge. They refer to it as a bench trial. Uh, in a bench trial, the judge sitting alone will listen to all of the evidence uh, presented by the prosecutor and as well as by yourself if you have any. Um, and the judge alone makes the decision as to whether or not you're guilty or not guilty. Okay. Um, the other type of trial that you could have is a jury trial. Now, um, the district court in most of the juvenile court cases, that means it's a jury of six people. And the six people are chosen at random. You and your attorney um, are part of that jury selection process. And the idea is to get an impartial jury. Six people who don't know you, they don't know the prosecutor, they don't know anybody involved in the case. And they can listen to all of the evidence and they can sit there and make a decision as to whether or not you're guilty or not guilty. And what's important about a jury trial as well is that all six people, they all have to agree on the verdict. It's, it's not a majority rules or anything like that. They all have to agree thumbs up or thumbs down, either guilty or not guilty, okay? Uh, those are the two types of trials that you can have, okay? Another right you're giving up is the presumption of innocence, okay? Uh, by doing this, like I said before at the beginning, um, when you enter into a plea, you're admitting to doing something wrong. Uh, if you didn't admit to doing something wrong through tender of plea, you're ultimately presumed to be innocent until you're proven guilty at a trial, okay? It could be, like I said, it could be a judge trial or a jury trial, but you're presumed innocent until you're proven guilty. Um, and by doing this, you're waiving that presumption of innocence. You're taking the burden away from the prosecutor to bring enough evidence to court to prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. By entering this plea, you're saying, I did something wrong. The prosecutor is now relieved of that burden of proving the particular thing that you did wrong. Um, and so you're waiving that. You're giving up your presumption of innocence. Um, by, by entering into a plea. Now the next important right you're waiving is your right to confront the evidence and witnesses against you. Okay, What that means is that at a trial um, you always have the ability to, um, to cross-examine witnesses and that means to ask the witnesses questions. So the prosecutor is going to put police officers on the stand. The prosecutor might have other civilian witnesses who were there and they saw certain things and they heard you say certain things. Um, you always have the right to, through your lawyer usually, to ask them questions to try and show that, you know, maybe they were mistaken, maybe they're lying, uh, just essentially to poke holes in their story. As, and this also applies to any other evidence. So your lawyer might be able to lodge what they call a legal challenge to the admissibility of certain evidence or to show, uh, to demonstrate for the judge or the jury that the evidence really isn't all that important in the first place. But essentially by doing the plea, you're waiving that right as well. That's to confront any witnesses or evidence that the prosecutor is bringing against you. Okay. Um, the next right you're waiving is uh, your right, your own right to testify or produce evidence in support of your own case. Now, although you're not required to, uh, you have every right to tell your side of the story, to get up on the witness stand and answer questions about exactly what happened in your eyes. You could also have other people who maybe were there and have information concerning the particular case come in and testify. If you have documentary evidence like photographs or videos or, or papers that show certain things that are in support of, of you in the case, 
um, you can certainly bring those things in as well. But again, by doing this, you're admitting to doing something wrong and you're waiving your right to testify or produce any evidence that helps your case, okay? And the last major right you're giving up is the right against self-incrimination. Uh, I like to think of this right as the right not to tell on yourself. Um, basically, by doing, by doing this, you're giving up the right, to, again, to make the prosecutor prove the case without you. What I mean by that is that although the prosecutor has to put witnesses on the witness stand to testify about the facts of the case, to try and prove that you did a certain thing, they can never call you to the witness stand to testify if you don't want to. And like I said a minute ago, you have the right, every right to go up there and tell your side of the story, but no one can force you to do so. And that's the right against self-incrimination, that's the right against telling on yourself. Um, no one can make you get up there on the witness stand and incriminate yourself or otherwise testify unless you say it's okay. Um, but by doing this, you're saying, I'm giving up that right, I'm, I'm admitting to doing something wrong, and essentially I'm incriminating myself, I'm telling on myself by entering into this tender of plea. Now those are the five most important rights, as I see it, uh, that are they're on the form, and you're gonna see they're particularly talked about in this first paragraph here. There's some other things that you should consider that are on the form, uh, particularly if you're not a United States citizen. Uh, there's some warnings on the form, and the judge will go through those as well with you. Um, that if you're not a citizen, some bad things can happen. Um, you could be deported, uh, you could be denied uh, naturalization or to become a citizen in the future, or if you left the country, they might not let you back in later on. Uh, these are some of the warnings that they have here as well, um, and the very important stuff to read and understand and talk about with your lawyer. Um, so if you're considering a plea, you do have to understand all of those things. Uh, what you're likely to get as a sentence, um, the fact that the judge doesn't have to necessarily go with everything you're asking for, and that by entering into a plea, you're giving up the right to fight the case anymore. You're giving up these five rights we talked about. You're also giving up the right to appeal the case. Um, many times, if you go, say, go to trial and you lose a case, uh, maybe there were mistakes made at the trial that you could appeal to a higher court and ask them to overturn your conviction. But by doing this, you're also giving up that right as well. All right, so if you have any questions about what it means uh, to tender a plea or take a plea, uh, please feel free to uh, give me a call shoot me an email or leave me a comment below the video. I'd be happy to speak with you about it.